Uh, we're joined on the line by Sligo footballer Pat Spillane. Good morning, Pat. Hi, lads. How are you? How are you getting on? Good, thanks. Yeah, can't complain. Where do you sit on the uh, Oasis versus Blur <laughs> versus Pulp debate? Is this like... Uh, yeah, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even recognise these names or... I'll, I'll sit on the fence on that one. <laughs> Um, so Dublin uh, Kingspan Brefney Park tomorrow night uh, you're obviously a Dublin club footballer has Tony McEntee been mining you for insights this week? No he hasn't been no um, haven't been in touch now with, with, with Tom Lehigh feeder now so we're, uh, we're focusing on ourselves ahead of the game Yeah what uh, an amazing season for Sligo obviously when you piece it all together promotion the Division 4 champions the Connick final the Sam Maguire football the draw with Kildare you've I presume ticked an awful lot of the pre-season goals at this stage yeah we have in fairness um, it's brilliant. been a brilliant campaign for us obviously we set out the start of the year to, to go up to, uh, to get promoted as champions from uh, Division 4 obviously we did that when we saw the draw ahead of us we set the target as, as going after a Connick final um, and of course to get a result as well in the group stage game which I think not a lot of people expected from us so it's been a brilliant campaign we're going into Sunday now in, in bonus territory obviously we're playing one of the top teams in the game um, with no pressure on us and obviously still alive so yeah it's been a been a brilliant year and it's, it's brought us on massively as a group Are you talking about that still alive aspect? Yeah so it's um, obviously you look it's um, you know it's a, it's a funny way the, the, the system is is this year you know coming into the game we actually don't even have to beat the Dubs it, it, it could come down to, to points difference on the day so absolutely we're, we're, we're still alive in this there's going to be a shock somewhere this weekend and hopefully we'll put in a, a good performance and put us in a good position to, to stay alive in the championship well, I know when we had Tony McEntee on recently Paddy was talking about the, the, the travelling from, from Cross Midlen for, for training and all the rest oh, how's it been for yourself you know, getting across to Sligo and Beacon for, for training sessions is it, is it tough you're, you're picking up a lot of miles there yeah, it's a, it's a busy schedule now, I suppose, to to give you a bit of insight into the week. The last session we had now was on Wednesday, so I suppose I would have left work early. You get over to the session, I was home at about half one in the morning, then you're up then it for work at seven in the next morning again. So it's, it's fairly full on. We've been training most of the year midweek in Sligo, so over and back on the Wednesday, over on the Friday, and then back to Dublin again on the Sunday. So it's a, yeah, it's a busy schedule, but it's enjoyable, so, so you don't mind doing it. Does it take a bit of a toll on the body, Pat? Do you have? Is there other stuff you need to do to uh, recuperate from the travel alone? Yeah, um, I suppose it's my second year now. In year one, I think it was a bit of a shock to the system. I ended up getting injured twice last year, so I think coming into this year, I knew I had to put a put a bigger focus on the body. So I think the bigger challenge, the, the biggest challenge, isn't really the fitness at this level. I think it's being fresh and available for for training and matches. So when you're not training, it's putting a big emphasis on your recovery and what you're doing outside the sessions it's, that, that makes a big difference You made your, your, your Sligo debut in uh, the National League game against Wexford I think I'm right in saying in January of last year Pat so was Sligo always on your radar I know your mother's a Sligo woman so just for people unaware so was that always a, a consideration even when you were growing up that you might end up lining up for Sligo with uh, yeah, I was I was always aware of the link, but it wasn't something I ever proactively <laughs> went after doing. Like I was, you know, I was I was aware that it was an option, but um, I suppose after the Dublin Championship two years ago, um, sorry, last year, the, the Sligo County Board reached out to me, and it, it did come as come as a bit of a surprise. But um, yeah, delighted I went for it. It's been a been a really enjoyable two years with the group now. There is a there is a scenario where Sligo finish third in the group. Um, do you know if they better the uh, there was I guess the result against Kildare. Um, and that could also mean Kerry finish second in their group. Like, is a is a potential Kerry Sligo match in the, in the preliminary quarter final? Is that a, a, a something you would dread or, or embrace, or how would you feel about a fixture like that? Yeah, I think uh, don't want to jump ahead too much. Now we've got a big enough <laughs> test ahead of us on Sunday. But uh, yeah, obviously that'd be something you'd uh, you'd embrace. Obviously, as a group, like we're we've come out of Division Four this year. Um, the way the championship is structured this year we're playing against Division 1 Division 2 teams and that's where we want to be as a group in a couple of years you know we've a, we've a massive opportunity against Dublin now on Sunday we won't get the chance to play Dublin again for another couple of years so um, we're really looking forward to it and ideally if all going well we keep developing the way we are we'd love to be playing teams like Kerry and Dublin on a consistent basis Can you talk to us a bit more about the Sligo connection pack because I think probably a lot of people would have seen your name pop up on a Sligo shirt and been like what's that fella doing there but like Shane says obviously your mum where in Sligo is she from? She's from Carrow so she was uh, John's GA club was uh, yeah is is the connection there And would you have been up there a good bit as a young fella or what's the connection? 
on that side would have been up would have been up the odd time when I was younger but um, not in recent years all of the family had flown the nest so actually there's no one from, from the Maloney still still left in Sligo now so I suppose my first time back in Sligo in a number of years would have been for my first session last year so um, yeah so that was that was the connection so it's uh, the Maloney family from Carrow um, in our house at home, they, we uh, my mother has been exiled from uh, Mayo, living in Westmeath. But we talk about Mayo all the time. Is uh, was it a similar uh, scenario in your house in relation to Sligo? Was that a, a constant factor for you? Um, no, unfortunately not. I think we were in a, a hot bed of Kerry football down below in, in Temple, so uh, Sligo football didn't get too much of a mention down there. But uh, yeah, she wouldn't have been from uh, from I suppose a big GA family as such. So. Uh, I don't think she ever would have been putting too much pressure on me to, to join Sligo. Yeah, but at the same time, does it make it uh, all the sweeter almost in some sense that she has been rooted in Kerry GEA by association obviously for the last four or five decades and now suddenly, you know, this is my time to shine here. I can go back to my roots. Yeah, definitely. She, they've taken a huge amount of enjoyment out of it and for them as well, it's a brilliant excuse for them to get up home again. Obviously, her, uh, my aunts and uncles as well have been going to the games as well. So it's, it's been brilliant. They've taken a huge amount of enjoyment out of it. And uh, yeah, I don't think they expected to spend as much time in Sligo as they have in the last two years. And that's down to down to the football team. So yeah, it's been brilliant. How would you compare, um, Shane mentioned your two years, nearly full two years now at this stage um, with Sligo and you're playing away with Bowden, obviously in, in Dublin and do, doing very well on that front. How would you compare the standard of the Dublin Club Championship and the Connacht Championship, let's say? It's uh, I'll, I'll, it's St Jude's I'm playing with. I'll have Jude, to sorry, yes, the lads, the, lads will, the lads will kill me if I let that <laughs> one slip. Adrian to kill McCudd man, so he doesn't care, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, like it's in fairness, the Dublin club football is a is a serious standard. I think in terms of the the facilities there, the structure, the how well organised the teams are, it's, it's effectively inter county standard. Um, but I suppose the big surprise for me when I joined Sligo was just the quality of footballers that are there. Um, I thought coming up from, from Dublin Senior Championship it would have been a much smoother transition I thought it's pretty much going to be on a level playing field here but there's serious serious talent in the group here um, I suppose for a lot of the guys probably coming from smaller clubs not with the facilities or the coach and maybe that that you know I'd be lucky to have in, in Dublin club football but um, there's brilliant work going on in Sligo now obviously you can see it coming through from the success of the underage teams and the colleges teams so um, it's going in the right direction but yeah it's, uh, it's two very different setups Have you found that your own game like how have you found your own game over the course of all that like has it taken you a bit of time to I mean I don't want to assume it's a step up that's why I was asking you that previous question uh, but how have you found your own game moving into a, a, what I'm assuming is a different standard of football yeah, it's um, yeah improved a lot over the last two years. Obviously, still a still a huge amount of development to go. But um, the big thing really is just the time on the ball and the pace of the game. I think at the club level, even at Dublin senior club level, you just have that extra second or two on the ball to to make a decision. At inter county level, the big thing I found is that you get turned over and the ball is up the other side of the field in, in, in a shot. So it's just mentally, I suppose, is is the biggest thing is just getting tuned into when you're turned over, when you turn over a team. It's just so fast paced. But um, yeah, it's been, been brilliant. I've worked with obviously really good coaches in Sligo now over the last two years. So it's, it's been a big benefit. Are you getting regular nuggets of advice from your dad, Pat? Like I know it was it was a different kind of game back when he played, but uh, I'm, I'm sure he still has uh, the arm over the shoulder and little bits of advice. He watched all your games so I'm sure that's a comfort to have as well yeah he's, he's a good asset to have alright he's um, yeah he watches he goes to all the games he watches all the games um, so yeah he's um, no he's brilliant I think in fairness the biggest photo conference I have from at the minute is that he isn't giving me too much feedback <laughs> um, which is a good sign he's just he's just telling me to keep doing what I'm doing so uh, no he's, he's brilliant to have and he's fully leaned into the Sligo Supporters Club now Oh, he is. He's an ultra. He's a, he's a diehard Sligo man. Now, in fairness, and he's been to every game this year. Right. So even if Sligo played Kerry, there'd be a, there'd be a discussion there. <laughs> there wouldn't be a discussion. He'd be on the Sligo fence. In fairness right. to him, yeah, he's 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 fully converted. It's interesting. Yeah, the full Sligo gear is out at the at the games. I understand. So that's uh, he's definitely jumped the jumped the fence in that. <laughs> uh, given the background, Pat, and growing up in that sort of environment, uh, your exposure to the media and stuff like that. Do you? Uh, what was your relationship with as you started to make your way with like whether it's Temple Noah or with Jude's or with Sligo? What's your relationship with the media given that um, your your background was so steeped in it from your dad's point of view? 
Ah, there wouldn't have been any media exposure really or, or, or pressure as such. Like, um, you know, I wouldn't have been marked out as, say, like a, a potential Kerry player growing up or anything like that. Obviously, there would have been a lot of really good players coming through from Temple Old at an underage level. My two cousins, Adrian and Killian, Tyke Morley, Gavin Crowley. So lads like that would have taken, I suppose, a lot of the attention off. Um, so I suppose for me personally, I played a huge amount of sports growing up. Played basketball, soccer, really enjoyed it. I suppose I wouldn't have been someone growing up in Temple Old ambitions of playing for Kerry or, or playing at a high level. So there never would have been any pressure or a spotlight on me really um, when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, Favourite fo- Gaelic football pundit, past or present? Just a tough one. I'll go Brawley. <laughs> Brawley's a <laughs> favourite. Uh, that, that won't go down well at home. Just excluding your dad, obviously, I presume then. I know we'll include dad in that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, on the pitch, um, uh, we've t- touched around it, but if Sligo can better kill theirs result against Roscommon by two points, then you'll go through. Um, so, obviously, with the dubs in plan uh, in mind tomorrow night, they're not at their strongest, and I'm sure that you're not overly uh, considering that aspect of it um, ahead of the game, but is there a confidence that you can beat them? Um, look, we'll go into the game to, to put in a performance. I think the last few games... Galway, Roscommon, Kildare we've shown that we can put scores on the board and we can frustrate Division 1 teams defensively as well um, I think the score line hasn't told the full picture in a number of these games like we have competed with these teams you looked at Kildare caused Dublin problems in the Leinster final Roscommon drew with the Dubs a couple of weeks ago and you know, we had good spells against both of those teams so um, we'll be confident we can put in a good performance next day and we'll, we'll focus on our own game What impact has, has Tony McEntee had, had in, the, in the squad? Because I remember reading quotes from Niall Murphy one of your teammates um, not too long ago when he was uh, saying Tony brought a wee bit of arrogance from being on winning teams as a player himself and maybe a little bit of um, uh, bite and grit were other words I think he used so, so what, what has he brought to that setup? Um, I'd say he probably just instills massive confidence in the group. Um, he just backs everyone to, you know, to to play their own game, back their own abilities. Um, you know, there's no pressure on us in terms of decision making. Like he, he tells us, kick the ball, get forward, be attack, and be aggressive. Um, I suppose it probably comes from from some of the great cross teams he was involved in as well down through the years. But um, yeah, he he just lets us do our own thing, fills us with confidence, really. And when I look at that, the, the backroom team, um, like Paul Durkin, obviously massively important, uh, a familiar face to any Donegal football fans, and the, the kick out obviously been so important in, in Gaelic football at the moment. And, and Colin McFadden as well. I mean, Colin was such a silky footballer um, to watch. So for, for someone like yourself, that must be of such benefit in training. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Obviously, yeah, Durkin's, Durkin's a brilliant man to have as well. But I suppose from my own perspective as a as, a, as an attacking player, like I've really enjoyed working with Colm. Um, I suppose one of the big areas for development for me was in terms of this year was looking at my movement um, and positioning and obviously to have someone like Cullum who you know who excelled at that um, for those great Donegal teams you know he's he's brilliant he's a great man to have around the training It must be quite inspirational to see the, the other 20 success as well in, in, in Sligo like clearly there are a, a pathway of, of, of underage players coming through the squad and I know Tony when he was on with us last time said he didn't want to rush any of those lads coming through to the senior squad but Knowing that that is is behind you, lads, is is uh, I guess a nice cushion as well. No, it's 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 brilliant for the group. Um, in fairness to the twenties that came in last year and this year, like they're they're completely fearless. Like I know a lot of the guys, you could come in at eighteen or nineteen, even to a club team at senior level and, and be a bit standoffish. They've just torn into it. Um, they've been really really impressive. Now, in fairness, a couple of the guys from this year's twenty team have come into to the training panel the last couple of weeks. Um, and they're absolutely flying it so it's yeah it's brilliant to see and there's there's a lot of lads coming through now who have long careers with Sligo Do you feel like people have been a bit dismissive of, of Sligo at times this season you hear like, I guess heading into every single game Sligo have been have been underdogs you know in championship terms so has there been a bit of a, a write off even, even ahead of the Kildare game I remember but no one really gave Sligo a chance and yet you saw the performance and that's clearly what you lads are capable of yeah, it's. I mean, it's only natural if you're going to ask someone's opinion on who's going to come out on top of the match between a Division One and a Division Four team. Of course, the, the educated guess is you're going to back the Division One team. But I suppose we've we've grown massively in confidence this year. Obviously, we went on a, on a nine-game winning streak, albeit at a, at a lower level. But um, we've shown we can compete with these with these big teams over the last couple of weeks. And I think you might not see the the results of it now but I think you'll really see the benefits of the season we've had next year when we go down into to Division 3 again and we're playing against level opposition How have you found the championship set up itself 
Pat, I mean, uh, I, I guess from a player perspective, having matches week on week is is a better alternative to, to training consistently. Shawnee Johnston was kind of saying that to us yesterday. You know, if there's a three week gap between matches, you're, you're going into training on the Monday, Tuesday after a match thinking, oh, this could be anything, this could be running or whatever. So it, it must be a little bit easier from that perspective. Yeah, 100%. From a purely selfish player perspective, we want games. <laughs> we want to be playing and obviously for, for a young team like ourselves as well to have a system that's allowing us to play a number of games um, against these top division teams rather than straight knockout has been brilliant for us. Um, obviously, there's a narrative around the, the setup, the structure, the competition and everything else. But from a, from a player's perspective, we're all delighted with it. All right, Pat. Well, listen, we wish you the best of luck tomorrow. We'll catch up with you again down the track. Thanks, Billy, for jumping on. Cheers. Thanks, lads.